All right, welcome back to the YouTube channel, Psychology of Golf. Dr. Mark P. Otten, back with you from Cal State Northridge uh, with my first ever video, uh, course video log from a private golf course, the beautiful Bella Colina Golf Course in San Clemente. Uh, before we get into the course and um, the details and the videos and the psychology tips, um, I just wanted to uh, touch base on how, th how this happened. Um, first of all, shout out to Brian, the director of golf at Bella Colina. I reached out to him with an idea to film Psychology of Golf there, and in, in, um, in exchange, I uh, offered to put this video up on their website, their country club. So um, if you're watching through that link, hello. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you're watching through my YouTube channel, hello. Um, and also, just a quick note about private golf courses. I mean, this is how I got uh, access, uh, thanks to Brian. Um, if you're at like a, let's say a kid golfer, a junior golfer, and you're like, man, I can't get onto this beautiful golf course, Bella Colina, because it's private. What should I do? Well, uh, there are junior events. There are high school events. If you end up on your high school golf team, certainly if you end up on a college scholarship and a college golf team, I mean, there's lots of opportunities, I think, that pop up if you're a, a junior. So play more, practice more, get on a team, um, play those, those events. Um, uh, there are also pro events in Southern California, for example. There's like the PGA event at Riviera Country Club. You can go for less than $100 and go watch the pros. Um, there's a couple of LPGA Tour events, uh, one at, in Palos Verdes, one at Wilshire Country Club. Last year they had one at Satakoy um, uh, Country Club in the Satakoy Club in Camarillo. There's a Champions Tour event in Newport Beach. You can go to all these events, check out private courses, and watch. Um, if you are a member of the Southern California Golf Association or and or greenskeeper.org, they have private golf events. There's, I believe, one at Bella Colina every year um, where you can go and play for about $100. So there's lots of options, um, potentially, to get you onto private golf courses. Besides all those, uh, I would like to offer this video because it gives you a window into what Bella Colina looks like. Uh, the course is, is in San Clemente. San Clemente is known to be a beach town in Orange County, South Orange County, kind of at the, at the, at the bottom of Orange County, right before you get to Camp Pendleton and then San Diego County. Um, this course is built along these these bluffs that are like, I mean, it's super cool. Gary Player, the famous um, Hall of Fame golfer, designed uh, three nine-hole courses here. So if I'm showing you the scorecard here for myself on this particular day, it's only 18 of the 27 holes I played. And this was just the uh, what the club recommended for that particular day. I played the Muirfield course followed by the Royal Litham course. There's a third course as well. This is what the scorecard looks like. Um, I played the blue tees on this day, so it was uh, it's not too long, maybe 6,000 yards, something like that. Um, but lots of twists and turns and ups and downs and variety and just, I mean, it was, um, it was really cool. Uh, lots of uh, intrigue here to this particular course. Um, so let's get into it. Are you ready? This is hole one. So first of all, uh, I didn't review the system at the beginning of this video, but the system is that I give each hole two ratings. One is for fear and one is for fun. I'm not saying you're going to be scared necessarily on the golf course too often. Maybe you will, but it's more like this implicit like awareness of, oh, there's a water hazard or, oh, there's a sand trap there. Um, versus a fun rating. Fun rating could be, man, look at the scenery. Uh, look at the variety of shot options that I have. Um, look at the pace of play and, and different uh, things like that that might be intriguing and, and enjoyable um, on a golf course. So the first hole here, uh, it was a par five, uh, so it was a long one. I walked up to this hole and I was immediately struck by how like, um, the scenery just played out in front of me. It was downhill, you're hitting off of a big um, uh, ledge down to a fairway down there. There is water on the left, there's a hill on the right. There's all kinds of scenery right away. So uh, fun rating for one of the most fun holes in terms of um, shot options for you, but also fear rating too, because that water's right there. If you, if you hook it left, 
if you go right, you're probably out of bounds. So right away, there's um, just lots going on. There's also a dog leg to the right, I think, towards the um, the second half of this hole. So let's see how it looks. Um, yeah, so you're up up high here, uh, looking out. By the way, the course here is it was really green. This is a unusual winter in Southern California with lots of rain. So uh, here I managed to hit a ball straight into the fairway. Good start, Dr. Otten. Whew. But then I was like, where did it go? It's hard to see. So I ended up in the fairway. You can see the out of bounds on the right here. Uh, closer to that than I am to the um, water on the left. So um, yeah, I think the, the play here is probably to the right a little bit because it funnels down. If you, if you hit it right, it kind of kicks left a little bit. Whereas if you hit it left, maybe not so much. Um, this was a three wood from the fairway. Uh, I, I think I hit a third shot here that was not captured on video. So I managed to get a green in regulation here, just barely on the fringe here with a birdie putt. Uh, by the way, two things to note here. One is my friend Andrew was with me on this day. So he's, he's there in the, <laughs> with the white hat. So you'll see him periodically showing up and walking around in the back. Um, the other thing is that in my previous videos, I have um, described courses that I'm very familiar with. This one was the first time I've ever played Bella Colina, hopefully not the last. <laughs> but all of my impressions, all of my like descriptions of holes and the fun and the fear ratings, they're all based on first impressions. So just know that. Like, it's not maybe necessarily quite as accurate as it would be if I played the course ten times in a row. Then I would probably know a little bit. Okay, this hole is actually scarier than it looks, and things like that. Or this one's more fun than you realize. That's not going to be featured here. This is all just based on first impression. But that said, I think first impressions are a big deal on a golf course. I mean, a lot of times you're playing a course for the first time. Like, that's a pretty common experience, especially if it's a private course and you're going out on one of those SCGA member outings or something like that, and you're trying to figure out the course for the, the first time. And, 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 you know, it's not a frequent occurrence for you to play. So, all right. So you can see some of the green on the hills there. I'm lining up a long birdie putt here. There's some wind out there on this day too. We're gonna talk more about these greens because they were slick, they were fast. I actually left that one short. Um, and let's see if I was able to save par on the first hole, par five. Fun hole, and yes, I was able to do it. Okay, so nice, nice uh, finish there for me, good start. By the way, I'm about, if you don't know, I'm about a 10 handicap golfer, so if I can alternate between pars and bogeys, then I'm pretty happy these days. Um, but I, I always try to get better. I always try to learn from my own psychology <laughs> lessons and stuff like that, just along with the rest of us. So second hole was a, as I recall, it went up and then it went down. So there's like this hill in the middle of the fairway. I think the hole overall is pretty flat, um, but it's, it's unique. It was, the uniqueness of this course stood out right away because you don't often see a big hill in the middle of the fairway. You can't see over that hill, but then it just drops off. So if you can clear that, that point in the fairway, I don't know exactly how far it was out, um, but I, I think I cleared it by a little bit and I was able to roll down towards the hole. Um, so if you're a long hitter here, you might be able to go big and it's a birdie hole. If, if the fun rating is a little bit higher than the fear rating, typically you're gonna, I'm gonna call that a birdie hole. Um, also, by the way, the handicap ratings here, this is handicap seven. This is just per nine. So like um, the, uh, yeah, the each nine hole course at Bella Colina is rated individually. So uh, the hardest hole on a particular nine is gonna get a one. The easiest hole by the handicap system is gonna get a, a nine. So anyway. All right, so here you can see this uh, this hill in the in the distance, um, and like I said, I think I I was off to a strong start here, so I managed to just barely clear the hill with my tee shot. Some desert kind of plants around Bella Colina a little bit, but this winter it's anything but desert, very green. This is my second shot. I think it came up a little bit short, and then rolled back down. There were a lot of I think those are called false fronts where you like you land on the fringe. And then it like rolls back. This one rolled back like quite a bit. Um, I also want to mention on this hole, as I chip up here and try to save par, um, on, at this moment, <laughs> there, were, there was a group of ladies behind us uh, and they were like, 
motioning and saying stuff. And I think they noticed our video camera. <laughs> so they were understandably concerned that we were going to be taking forever in front of them. And we didn't know like what the scene was going to be at this private course. Um, so we didn't want to get in the way. We wanted to <laughs> respect any of the, the members that needed to play through. And so as I was hitting that, that chip and, and this putt, I was like, let's finish this hole and talk to these people to reassure them that we're not going to take forever or if they wanted to play through. They ended up playing through on the next hole. But there's a psychology to that that I wanted to touch on briefly here because this can happen more often. I mean, most often this happens at crowded public courses where you're playing happily and then there's some people behind you that hit up, hit the ball close to you or maybe it's the other way around. There's slow golfers in front of you there's a pace of play issue there, and there's oftentimes some bad feelings that come along with that if the ball comes flying into your field of vision when you're trying to hit and the group behind you is hitting up or whatever. That can be super influential in how you feel about a golf course and also about your game. Uh, so in this case, I'll just give you an example of, of the psychology that you might be able to, to deploy here to, to handle the situation. So in this case... Um, for me personally, I did not want to get in the way. Like I was, I, this was not my, my place to, uh, to dictate pace of play for the members. So, um, for these particular shots on this hole, I wanted to keep a good pace to, um, sort of, uh, reassure anybody that we weren't taking forever, but I also wanted to keep my, my pre-shot routine. So if you have a pre-shot routine, you line up the putt, you line up the chip, you don't want to rush that. You don't want to just walk up to the ball and smack it prematurely because then that's going to ruin the hole for you. You're not going to, uh, you might get lucky and hit a nice shot, but for the most part, you're going to be disrupting your own game. So I would say be true to yourself in those moments. If you're trying to finish a hole while others are watching or playing or whatever, um, try to get through that hole with your usual routine. And at the end of the hole, try to handle the situation so that it doesn't go on multiple holes. If it goes on multiple holes, then you're continually disrupted and it's it's not good. So um, I think I that said, here's my attempt to save par. <laughs> and I think I, I, uh, I might have missed this putt, but these putts were not easy. So it's not necessarily anybody's fault that I missed this one. Um, yeah, so I was able to tap in. We let the, the members play through. <laughs> and then we tackled the par three here, 154 yards. So uh, crisis averted, and luckily everybody else was. Um, there were no other issues with the with the uh, the pace of play on this particular day. Um, thanks to my photographer. Thanks to my friend Andrew for <laughs> keeping our pace at, at four hours approximately this day. So on to the par three here. This was, um, I mean, fun rating 15. That's pretty low considering this was visually a pretty nice looking hole um, with a bunch of junk in front of the hole. So if you hit short here, if you don't get the ball in the air, you're stuck. Um, you got to get the ball in the air and hit over this, this um, I call it junk, but it's sort of like this mix of, um, of uh, vegetation you'll see here. Uh, and really you want to go long on this hole. As I recall, you want to make sure you get to the back of the green. I don't think I did that. <laughs> I think I might've hit the false front again. Uh, and just kick back down. But luckily I didn't kick down like too much. Yeah, so I, there's a little bit of grass you see to catch it there before it falls back into the out of bounds. But on some of these holes, I'll do a better job of going long and missing those false fronts. So uh, we'll, we'll see. This was a good chip to get me within par range. I would call that a good chip. And I missed the par. All right, so good start. Missed a couple putts though. For me, that's a good start. On to hole four. Uh, this one, fun rating seven, fear rating four. So let's take a look at this hole and I'll talk about why this one gets some higher ratings here. You know, first impression on this golf course, a lot of the more scary looking holes with challenge involved were also fun. Like I feel like more or less, like if you're, if you're looking at a hole and seeing challenge, it's a fun challenge on this course because there is like you've seen now, Lots of ups and downs, hills and different variety, and it's it's not surrounded by homes like some courses are. It's it's out in the bluffs. It's out in the in the in nature. So it's really, um, I mean, they, they did a fantastic job of carving this these holes into the existing hills and making it look 
uh, it's kind of seamless. Okay, so looking looking at this tee shot here, I'm going, so you see some green to the left, that's a different hole. The green uh, color on the right, I guess that's the right center of your picture. That's the fairway way down there. So you're kind of clearing this mixture of um, desert and other plants here again. And you're also trying to clear that, um, kind of that, uh, well, I guess it's wood chips up ahead. Um, and trying to get to the fairway and then it slopes from right to left so you're going to try to aim for the right side of that fairway if you can it's another hole where you got to get the ball in the air so if you're a, a beginner golfer or a 20 plus handicap golfer you're probably playing the the forward tees here because there's a lot of carry what, what's it called force carries where you have to clear a bunch of stuff and you probably don't want that if you're <laughs> struggling to get the ball in the air you, you're gonna shoot a higher score you, you, yeah you want to probably move a little bit forward but meanwhile this is visually quite awesome because you got so many hills in front of you and i was able to get a, a shot here into the middle of the fairway it, it i think it landed in the middle of the fairway and then kicked over here so you can see already there's some right to left slope in that fairway narrowly missing these bunkers and this is a, a approach shot that also will slope right to left so if you're um, trying to run it up there like I am with a two iron, you probably want to aim a little bit right of center. Uh, and I think I was able to do that uh, here. I have my old school two iron where I can run the ball, hit kind of a um, low shot and have it roll. So this one managed to roll onto the green, green in regulation. Let's go. <laughs> Look at this putt though. Oh man, that is like a 15 20 foot right to left breaker i thought i started it high enough but i didn't and then i left it a little bit short so these greens were a, a big challenge and yeah i'm going to talk more about it did i save par i did that was a really good putt right there for me okay all right par five uh, i'm sorry hole five par four uh this one <laughs> this one is like maybe the most boring hole in the golf course i mean this is not a boring golf course. Let's put it that way. So the most boring hole on this golf course is still quite <laughs> quite uh, entertaining, uh, I would say. So this one, um, fun rating 18, fear rating 17. It's pretty wide open. Like, okay, it doesn't look super wide open from this angle. There's these bushes that come in on the left, but they're only like, I don't know, maybe 50 to 100 yards out. If you can clear that, there's like a wide landing area here. Um, and it spans pretty pretty far from left to right. So step up here and just smack it, and don't worry about uh, the, the positioning too much. I think I might have hit this one a little thin, so I got scared that it was going to go straight into the bushes, but it didn't, um, and it ended up here in the middle of the fairway. I think there's some business park buildings there up on the hill. This is another hole where you kind of you go up, and then you kind of come down again. Um, this was my two iron again. Um, kind of sailed this one off to the left, uh, but managed to give myself a clean look with some, uh, some of these, some of these chips really, you have a lot of green to work with and some of them you don't. This one I had more to work with, so it was an opportunity. However, <laughs> I rolled it too far past and made life difficult on my par putt here. This is not an easy par putt. Go, go. Oh, it didn't quite go. All right. So no disasters yet. Nothing out of bounds. That's good. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hole six, uh, fear rating six. So this one is a little bit more scary than it is fun. Handicap one on this nine, bogey hole. Why is this hole more scary than it is fun? Well, this, I mean, this tee shot looks familiar. This is another one of these um, where you have to carry the, the, the bushes, and then it's going to slope from right to left. But let me go back to the yardage, 429 yards from the blue tees. That's a long way. I hit the ball, I mean, I think on this day I was driving it about 250, maybe something along those lines. So I wasn't, I mean, I'm not crushing the ball. I don't have a huge driver. My driver is like 15 years old. Uh, so <laughs> no, I'm not blaming the equipment. I'm just saying that I'm not hitting the ball as far as professional golfers would. But I'm also not super short. So this one, I was like, all right, I hit a pretty good shot, but I've still got a ton of work left. Man, I'm hitting a three wood now, and like, I don't think I can get there. So let me see what I, what I ended up with here. 
Like, how, how do I not reach on a par four? Yeah, some of these holes are not long. It's only 6,000 something, maybe 6,000 yards total. This one is long. Okay, so I hit a good three wood. Like, I hit it pretty solid. And I've still got to go over a tree here from about, I don't know, 80 yards away to get to the green. So, like, I'm starting to feel like, man, like, I'm actually hitting good shots and they're not being rewarded. So we have a challenge. This, this, this whole, this golf course is starting to feel like a challenge. Here I <laughs> took a little bit of extra energy to loft that sand wedge over the tree. That was another great shot. And so now I'm putting for par, but I've got some distance here. I mean, first of all, check out the camera angle. You can see some of the San Clemente homes in the distance. This is inland San Clemente, by the way, not beach town San Clemente. Like this, the inland part is, is along these bluffs. There might be a distant ocean view, but for the most part, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're away from the, from the beach. However, you will in the summer, if you're playing this course in the summer, you're gonna get some relief from the heat because you're not too far from the beach. Um, so anyway, you can see the, the scenery there in the distance. You can also see that I rolled this putt too far, and now I've got work to do for bogey. Uh-oh, do we have our first three putt of the day? Sometimes these are inevitable. Oh, I thought it was in. Okay, so I hit a good three wood. I hit a really good sandwich to get over that tree. I thought I had a really nice putt to save the, two, the bogey and the two putt. So I hit three good shots there and ended up with a double bogey. Whew. Watch out for hole number six. Okay. Hole number seven, uh, uh, supposed to be a relief hole here, 150 yards. Uh, fun rating 17, fear rating nine. Okay, so it's a little bit scary and not super fun compared to a lot of the other holes. Why not? Well, it's pretty straightforward par three. It's supposed to, well, it's supposed to be pretty straightforward. <laughs> I did not, I was like, all right, this is where for me in this particular round, I was, I, I kind of met my match. Like I was like, all right, I'm pr playing, I'm playing well for me and I'm not being rewarded, like I said. So man, like I'm kind of walking up to this tee box, like I, I, I'm a little frustrated, but at the same time, the psychology recommendation there is to know that you're hitting good shots. And I think after this hole, <laughs> I was able to, to put that together and, and recover, not on this hole. <laughs> but if you know you're hitting good shots, you, you feel like it's going to come around, like it's going to come together. The results are going to come eventually. Uh, not necessarily with this six iron though. What happened with this six iron? Well, I came up short, didn't hit it clean. Okay, so now I'm chipping up this hill. The green is just on the other side of the hill, so it's not a long chip, but I didn't hit it well. I think I like scold it, as they say, so I didn't hit it clean. Watch this shot now. I'm like, my feet are in the, <laughs> in the bunker. Oh, I can laugh now. But anyway, this actually was the shot of the day for Dr. Otten right here. Watch this, choking up way on the club. Look at this roll, look at this roll. <laughs> it didn't go in though, and then it kept rolling and rolling and rolling. So again, I hit a fantastic shot, shot of the day, no reward, because now I've got a bogey putt from like, what is that, 20, 25 feet? And I tried, it was a pretty good putt. Didn't quite get there. So two double bogeys in a row. For me, that's a reckoning. That's like, all right, I see you, Bella Colina. I feel the dif difficulty here. I've hit some fantastic shots and I still don't have a reward on the scorecard. So again, if that happens, if you're feeling, it's better to, is it better to hit good golf shots and a, have a bad score or is it better to hit bad golf shots and have a good score? I don't know. <laughs> But in this case, or in either case, you wanna seize on the positive as much as you can. So if you're hitting bad golf shots, but your score is good, then you're like, okay, I'm able to, something is working here. I'm able to, maybe the course is not punishing me for these things. In this case, I was hitting good, good golf shots without reward. In that case, you have to like, just stay the course, like trust it. Trust that you're hitting good golf shots. And I, I managed to do that here. So um, this was two, two tough holes though, man. Uh, 
par four. This one, this one, uh, 329 yards. So it's a little bit shorter. Um, fear rating 18. What does that mean? The least scary golf cor- uh, golf hole out of the whole round. <laughs> that helps <laughs> in this case because I just doubled two holes in a row. I need to subtract some of that fear, and this this hole did it for me. Fun rating 16. Not super fun in that it was pretty wide open, pretty straightforward. So you can't really see it here, but this is a dogleg right, and there's there's a couple bunkers out there. But I just just like I'm gonna just smack this ball as hard as I can, try to get some distance out there, make my life easier, and I did. And the hole is kind of behind the graphic there. Um, it's uphill from here, uh, but I was hitting a seven iron, so not not too um, too much distance. Uh, like I said, pretty short, pretty open, and I hit a I hit a good seven iron here. So this is the the green looking back towards the fairway, or I guess back towards the the, um, the cart path there. The key here, as I recall, there's a bunker in front uh, just behind where my friend is standing there. So if you go long on this approach shot, you're, you're much better off. And I didn't necessarily know that. <laughs> I just hit the ball. And it worked out because it was just above the hole here. And then this putt, super downhill. Look at this. I barely even tapped it. And it's going, birdie, come on, birdie. Not quite, but good speed. So we'll talk, uh, we'll talk more about these putts in a minute. All right, so I say par, back on track here. And to finish up the Muir Field 9, the front 9 for me on this day, the most scary and the most fun hole on the golf course, a par 5, 567 yards. This hole was just confusing uh, <laughs> the first time you play it. I played it. And I felt like I wanted to go back to the tee box and play it again because now I knew a little bit more about what I was supposed to do. Because there's just, I mean, this is unique. I, I don't think I'd ever pl- quite played a hole like this. So you're looking at, which is great, like Bella Colina, fantastic, uh, this, this particular hole. So it's downhill. First of all, 567 yards is a long way. But to de- say it's downhill is kind of an understatement. This tee shot is relatively straightforward. So it curves to the right. The downhill extreme downhill part is not yet apparent um, from this look. Uh, It just looks like a gentle downhill at this point, which it was. So managed to hit it in the fairway pretty far. Now look at this. Okay, so you can see a hill in the fairway that kind of drops off, right? There's a drop off about maybe 30 yards from where I am. So I just hit hit the ball probably 250. If I'd hit the ball 280, I would have then rolled 100 more yards, I think. Something like that. Because that hill in the fairway, it just like drops off super quick. And so I didn't, I mean, I don't think I could have achieved that. Like I, the only way I could have achieved that is by moving to the full forward tees or something like that. But if you're a long hitter here um, and you get that, that slope that, that is in front of me there, you're, you're, I mean, you're for sure having a shot in two uh, into the green, even though there's a, a creek in front of the green. But I couldn't quite get there. <laughs> so now there's this kind of, um, what is it, like uh, cliff-like feature to the fairway, about 30 yards in front of me. And then it kind of curves a little bit down to the right toward the hole. You, you, you don't want to fly it towards the hole from here because there's that little creek in front of the, uh, in front of the green. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to take a 9-iron and just pitch it into the hill and let it roll down. Little did I know that was not quite the the play. (laughs) But here I am trying to play this hole for the first time. And I mean, there's a lot of visuals there too. You can see the scenery in the back, the homes. All right, so what happened? Well, I pitched it about, I don't know, what was that, 100 yards. And I ended up in the ground under repair over here. I actually had to move it back a a few yards. But I I didn't put myself in a position where I could reach the green because you have to see that, that fairway sloping from left to right there in front of me, I had to get it on there and then get it a little further. So I really needed to hit it about 150, probably from that range. From here, I'm on this, I mean, you can see my stance. I'm like, it's like a downhill stance from, I don't know, maybe 180 yards or something. And like, there's that creek in front of the green. So that I I would have had to hit a miracle shot to get it on the green from here. I didn't know, I should have hit like a six iron or something instead of a nine. 
Anyway, so now I'm laying up again with a pitching wedge. This was a good layup. Uh, I managed to get under the ball enough to, so like I hit that fairway there and then I, it, then it kicked down into the sort of this landing area right in front of the creek where you have a look at the green. So now I'm, I'm hitting for birdie. I probably, next time I play the hole, like I would know better, but <laughs> anyway, here's the, uh, the look back at the, at the attempt at saving par, managed to chip it onto the back side here. And then the putt down the hill. Another downhill putt. Oh, I thought I had it. Another, I had two um, shots lip out on the front nine. Mm. Okay. So that hole, man, like there's the downhill component, which is very extreme. There's junk on either side. There's that creek you see there. Um, it's just so much uncertainty. I feel like that's one where if I played it multiple times, it may not no longer it might it, it might no longer be the number one hole on the on the fear scale. It might get less less scary. It might be a scoring opportunity because it's a par five. Um, but first first impression that hole is is unique and super cool. Okay, onto the Royal Litham part of the course, the back nine. All right, uh, hole number ten. Hole number ten for me on this particular day. Hole number one on the Royal Litham uh, nine section, section of nine holes as part of the 27 hole Bella Colina golf complex. So I think these uh, nines are named after famous UK courses. So again, designed by Gary Player. Pretty cool, right? All right. So par five to start us out here. This is like now the second straight par five. It's not always going to be like that if you play if you don't play the course in this order. But uh, the ninth hole for me, par five. Tenth hole for me, also a par five. So for me, that's like okay, maybe this is a scoring opportunity. But the whole the ninth hole was like all kinds of variety and confusion and fun. <laughs> so hole ten, not maybe quite as fun on first impression. Hole uh, hole ten was a fun rating of eight, uh, but a fear rating of fifteen because it was pretty wide open. At least it looked pretty wide open. So you're up, back up on the hill here again. It's uh, you go down and you go up and you go down again. Back up on on top here, um, and you've got a fairway down there that is pretty wide. Uh, it looks, I mean, I, I, as I recall, it looks and I, in my memory it kicks from right to left uh, as it comes down. So for me, I think I just started this one left and it stayed left. Um, the hole is going to dog leg to the right. So this was, um, I think it was like nestled against a, a, a dirt clod. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I moved it a little bit. Um, there's been a lot of rain in Southern California this winter. So you can see a little bit of repair ground under repair in there, but they're doing a good job of maintenance at Bella Colina. Um, so this is just a massive uphill shot. I didn't put a shot tracer on this one because I just barely cleared the dirt clod in front of me with my three wood worm burner <laughs> but it got the job done it got me part way up the hill and then look at this shot this is like straight up hill six iron i'm using I, it's probably not more than 150 yards um and the hole is right up there at the top of that hill so i'm just like all right let me just see if i can get it the right distance um and by by now i know that there's a lot of greens that um slope uh downhill from the front the false front so i'm like okay let me try to go along with these approach shots. And I did. This was a fantastic result. I didn't know what happened <laughs> from down at the bottom of the hill. Um, okay, so let's pause and talk about the putting here. Well, first of all, the scenery. I mean, look at that green hill behind you, uh, behind the green in the distance. Okay, so this putt is going to break crazily, like right to left. And we've seen some fast putts already. We've seen some breaking putts. So this is another moment of, of um, where I can pause and talk about the psychology of putting. Because this course is not an easy putt, uh, course to putt uh, for these reasons. Lots of speed, lots of, I mean, they're in really good shape. That's part of the reason they're so fast. So that, that part is, is um, enjoyable. You're not hitting like rocks and dirt and stuff on the green uh, when you putt. But, I mean, you could three putt your life away on this course if you're not careful because you've got a lot of speed. You can roll these putts so far past. You can misjudge the lines because you're 
uh, because there's a lot of break. So a couple of psychology tips. First of all is to appreciate the, the condition of, of greens like this. I mean, if they're in great condition, that's enjoyable, right? So accentuate the positive as much as you can. Also like just enjoy the, the variety, you know, like the same thing with the, the, the fairways that slope right to left or uphill, downhill. Just enjoy that variety and just think, man, this is such, such a cool putt. Like it's gonna break so much, I'm gonna pick a spot that I think I should aim for, and then I'm just going to enjoy watching it break like a ton. And it's much, it's so much more uh, novel than playing on a course where you're just on flat ground and every putt rolls straight. Um, so just trying to appreciate that as opposed to cursing it, <laughs> I think is the uh, is the the idea here. And then also um, stick to so establish a like a a way of reading the greens that you like and you can stick with. So for me, I don't like to take too much time, but I like to walk the green a little bit. So like walk between my, my ball and the hole and to, to judge by my feet if it's uphill or downhill to the hole and then also side to side if I can. So just like kind of walk across my line and, and back because I've learned that my eyes are, will deceive me a little bit if I'm just staring at it or using the, holding up the club and trying to judge just with my my vision. Um, but you might trust your vision a little bit more than I do. So as you're learning golf or as you're, you're trying to get better at golf, I would say just if you can trust that whatever system of reading the greens that you have and commit to it and, and believe in it, then it's not going to matter as much how much they're breaking or, um, it's going to allow you to appreciate the faster, truer, uh, breaking heavy breaking greens that we have here at Bella Colina. So let's check this one out. How far right did I aim? Pretty far right. Is it going to come down? Am I going to get my first birdie of the day? Uh, okay. No, but that was really fun. <laughs> All right. So I got a par on to start uh, my back nine here on this day. So feeling better. Um, Hole number 11 is, uh, well, it was a little bit confusing. I, as I recall, we finished the 10th hole and we were like, where do we go? And then one of the members was like, go that way. <laughs> so we did. Uh, it was a par three, kind of middle of the pack in terms of fear and fun. Um, but as par three goes, fear rating seven, that's pretty high. Um, so I'm calling this a bogey hole. Handicap nine, that's probably because of the short distance. But um, this one... <laughs> That that uh, those bushes on the sh on the right side and the sh and the short side there, they're pretty close to the green. And there's that false front again. So if you're short, as I'm about to be here, <laughs> you're in trouble. I think if you, if I had just played this way off to the left and let it kind of fade in or even miss the green on the left side, uh, I'd be okay. Long would have been fine. I went exactly where I didn't want to go, which was down here. Um, couldn't even see the green from here. Couldn't position the camera in a place where I could see <laughs> where I was going. But I managed to chip it up into the hill. This is also a, um, what the other thing the member said when we were lost trying to find this hole was that, <laughs> was it uh, something about the green. So I was like, hmm, this green's going to be even more extreme than the last one in terms of slope and um, speed. And so anyway, so I'm trying to save par here, but check, the, check out this putt. I'm, look at, first of all, look at where I'm aiming. <laughs> and I just tap it and then watch this. It's like it's falling off a cliff. You can't even tell on the video, but it, look at this speed. And then I was like, oh my God, I think I made it. Did I make it? Did I save par? No, I didn't. <laughs> and then I'm like, wait a minute. Is it going to keep rolling forever? But it finally stopped, I think. Right there. <laughs> I mean, just amazing. And then I was like, oh, I'm just going to take a tap in here. Luckily, I made it. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Ten, uh, 10 and 11, the greens. I should probably rate those a little bit more scary just because the greens were so crazy. Um, but hole 11 was just a short hole, 130 yards. So, yeah, play it long and left there and then just hope your putt stops someday <laughs> as you're hitting it down the hill. All right, hole 12. Um, uh, this one is fun. Uh, fun rating six, 341 yards, not too long. So this is a, a birdie hole in the sense that fun outweighs fear. Okay, so what are we doing here? Well, we're hitting off another 
another, uh, uh, oh, this is funny. Yeah, I was like, I was um, getting ready to hit, but the camera person was like, are you hitting? Yes, I'm hitting. Just a lot of scenery in this hole. I mean, hitting off of another hill, uh, top of a bluff here, and, and down to a fairway way down there. Um, but you can see off, I think that's looking to the south, maybe southeast towards San Diego County. Okay, so this is, um, the camera angle here is a little bit close on the ball, but um, the ball really rolled from right to left, as I recall, a lot here. And like a long hitter can really um, get pretty close to the green because it's such a, again, it's one of these where you're hitting off of a ledge and then it's just falling like 50 yards or something crazy. And yeah, maybe not that much, but pretty, pretty far. So mine, my, it was a good tee shot, rolled a lot, but I got some obstacles here in between me and the green, uh, including this tree. The tree was the biggest thing, so I had to get it up over that tree. I was only hitting from maybe 80 yards, I think, something like that, less than that, maybe 60 yards. And I got it over the tree, but I also went a little bit over the green. So this was not ideal, coming back up, trying to save par with a chip and a putt. Uh, giving myself a chance here. Do I have a chance? Yes, I do. This is only about 10 feet, maybe 8 feet. Come on, save par. Oh, I missed a few now at close range. All right. That was not a terrible bogey, given that I had to go over that, that tree. Um, fun hole, though. Hole 12. Hole 13, uh, middle of the pack in terms of fun rating, middle of the pack in terms of fear rating, um, but a little bit more fun than, than scary. 337 yards, not too far birdie hole here and some space in the fairway of course I mean you can see you don't want to go left um, but yeah some space in the fairway you can go right there's probably some uh, some forgiveness there and I think I did go right I was driving it pretty well on this day okay I'm I'm really close to the bunker uh, <laughs> but I but I'm clear you don't want to go too far right. I almost did. This is just an eight iron into the green. So I'm not scared. This hole, I'm ready. Okay, well, I didn't quite get the ball up again. I chunked my eight iron just slightly. So this is a attempt to save par again from off the green. Did I do it? Well, I went a little far with that chip. This is a short putt given that it's from the fringe but it didn't release out of the fringe. Some of this fringe is, is really fast and other, uh, really short, and other fringe is not. So that was a failed attempt to save par. Ended up with bogey there. All right, super fun hole. Hole number 14, fun rating two, second only to the ninth hole, which is wild and crazy. Fear rating five, pretty high, but only 287 yards. Wow, so what's going on with hole 14? Okay, so. This one, I mean, first of all, I, for me, I appreciate these holes that are like carved into the, to the natural scenery, carved into the hillsides, per, thus preserving the um, natural terrain. Like, I just feel like that's an achievement in golf design and um, golf uh, building. So this one, I think, stood out to me in that way because you're on kind of a, a side of a, of, a, of a bluff here, but the bushes are all around you. Um, so it, it does seem very natural, like you're out in, in the middle of these inland San Clemente Hills and you're going for a hike or something like that. Um, there is a, so there's a right to left um, and a little bit, I mean, it doesn't look uphill, but I felt uphill. <laughs> a right to left slant to the fairway. And then the look into the green I felt like was really like a, I don't know if this is the signature hole for Bella Colina. I don't know which one is. There's a lot to choose from. But this would be a pretty good um, nomination, I think, uh, on my end. I hit this ball. I wasn't sure what happened because it was on the right side. Turned out it was a little bit shorter than I thought, which is like, oh, maybe, maybe this hole is a little bit uphill. I don't know. Because 287 yards seems very short. Um, but I hit a decently long drive here. And I still have an eight iron into the green, so I don't know. I'd like to play this hole again someday and <laughs> um, see what happened. But I've got a clean look into the green, and you can see again this the scenery. Like this, this green is surrounded by hills. You could play it way up on the right side probably, and it would kick down 
Um, if you play it left, though, you're in trouble uh, because then it's going to kick the other way all the way down towards the 15th hole. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, this is good stuff, hole 14. So I managed to hit a straight ball here. Perhaps inspired by the scenery, it was a little bit short. Um, there's that hill. Again, you could hit it way up on that hill and it might kick down towards the green. All right, am I so inspired that I'm able to make this huge long birdie putt from the fringe? Almost, that was pretty good. Okay, that was a par, good stuff. Hole 15, back to a, a par three, and this one is a, again, kind of middle of the pack in terms of um, fear and, and fun for me. Um, the par threes for me, mm, did they stand out as much as the par fours and fives? Probably not, because the par fours, I mean, there's just so much variety out there up and down these hills. Um, on the par fours and fives, but anyway, let's take a look at this one. This one um, opens up a little bit towards the the uh, like the the bushes here are close around the tee box, but then not so much around the green. There is a bunker in front. Um, as I recall, I hit a fantastic shot here. <laughs> this was a five iron. The, the wind was blowing from left to right, and I faded it, and it just faded right towards the hole. I was like, all right, finally I'm going to get a birdie here. One thing that happened, though, as I recall, too, on this hole, um, is that it, it, it actually landed left of the flag. So looking back here, it would have been to the right of the flag on this angle. It landed, and then it rolled all the way down here. So another, this is another green with some sneaky fast slope. Uh, okay, so for here, I'm trying to go back up that hill, and then look at this turn at the end. Watch this. Come on down. Birdie time. Come on. Oh, almost. Another amazing green. These greens are just, just uh, entertaining. So that was a great hole for me. Par. I'll take it. Hole 16. Fun rating 3. Man, this Royal Litham 9. It's got some good stuff. Not that the other one didn't, but... Um, Fun stuff. This one's fun rating three, fear rating 11. All right, let's get after it. This means this is a potential birdie hole in the sense that it's going to be um, enjoyable and not too scary. 311 yards, so again, not too long. What's going on here? Well, you can't even see the green or the fairway <laughs> from where we're looking. So this one, you've got a slope on the, like a, a hill on the left. So what I was trying to do is hit it a little bit left of the fairway perhaps, and then have it kick down towards the fairway. And then 311 yards with a pretty steep cliff. I mean, there's some steep drop-offs here. This one is one of the more extreme, uh, as I recall. Like, a pretty good opportunity for a long hitter to reach the green. I mean, this one, I was thinking maybe I would as a not super long hitter. <laughs> 311 yards with some down slope. I might be able to get it to within 30 yards of the green here. Um, that was, that was what I was thinking. I could also lay up with an iron, but that's not fun. At least not when you have some fairway to work with. And I was hitting my driver pretty well on this day. So I hit it and then I was like, where's it going? And it's falling and it's falling and it's falling. And I was like, I think I hit it good. Well, I think it kicked off of the hill. You can see the hill to the left there. <laughs> and then maybe crossed the cart path and then ended up in the, uh, in the uh, I think it might've actually been like one of those balls that lands in the crack of the cart path and the, and the grass. And so for, for me, I, I give myself a club length of relief from there. Uh, I think that's, that's what happened here. I probably should have given myself even more relief because uh, for this particular chip, I don't know, my feet are kind of like on the path and I probably should have given myself a little better lie because then I chunked it and I landed it short and then it rolled and then it's still rolling and then it's rolling back down the hill <laughs> so i have to now chip up for birdie um the uh, i think on this whole the camera um we lost the video for about two or three shots maybe so i'm just showing you still photos here of the chip followed by i chipped it here this is a par putt from the fringe that I ended up missing and ended up with a, with a bogey here. Just trust me on that. <laughs> but you can see a little bit of the scenery here in the back. Um, there's another drop-off behind the green. 
So you don't want to go too long here with your approach either. But again, that's like, that was a hole where you're like, man, if I'm a long hitter, I'm, I'm accurate with my driver. I'm going for the green for sure. Um, or you can play an iron. Lots of different opportunities for creativity on hole 16 here, which would be hole 7 of Royal Litham. So enjoy. It makes me want to go back and play it again. All right. Uh, one more par five here, hole 17. This is another fun one. Fun rating five, fear rating three. <laughs> so there's some, some of both here. Um, handicap three, 502 yards. So this is a pretty um, challenging par five. For me, I, I treat par fives as um, scoring opportunities these days. Um, but this one may be the hardest of the bunch. Um, well, I say that, but then I... I'm remembering the ninth hole. Yeah, the ninth hole was, for me on this day was super confusing. So this was probably the second hardest, par five. All right. Another huge drop off here. Man, <laughs> this is just another still photo of, of me getting ready for the tee shot. And then we'll resume the videos, I think, on the next shot. Um, but this one, uh, I mean, there's the landing area is actually out of view, I think, below the, um, the forward tees there. There is a decent amount of space but not a huge amount, as I recall. So I'm just trying to hit a straight drive here. Um, it kicked to the left a little bit, um, and I'm pretty close to those bushes. So, yeah, I haven't been losing golf balls today. I almost did, I think, on this hole, but... Yeah, and then I hit another worm burner three wood. I feel like I'm, I'm hitting um, three woods kind of in the center of the golf ball instead of getting underneath them. But... It's getting the job done because I'm hitting them straight. <laughs> and there's some undulation here that messes with the balls a little bit above or below your feet. Okay, eight iron for the third shot here. By now I'm like, man, I do not want to leave these approach shots short. <sighs> and I did. <laughs> I'm like trying to not do it. Yeah, so what's the, what's the psychology there? You know what you're not supposed to do and yet you keep doing it. Well, the golf course gets a lot of credit first of all because um, because like, you know, that's what this course has, a lot of false fronts. So you have to give the golf course credit. Um, but also you, what I was, maybe my, my, uh, my only weakness, my only real weakness on this particular day was, um, uh, not redirecting, not reframing that thought, right? Like I'm leaving the ball short a lot. Okay. So I know what to do. I should go long more often. How do I do that? And then maybe putting that plan a little bit more into action. Here's my plan. I'm going to take an extra club each time. Or I'm going to change my swing a little bit, swing a little harder, or something. Whatever you're most comfortable with. On this, on this golf course, I probably should have taken a little extra club um, more often than not. Um, so that, that's the one thing I'll reflect on. Be like, what was my strategy there? How could I reframe, turn the fact that I was leaving the ball short into a positive um, uh, game plan uh, going forward, but I did. I didn't every time leave the ball short, and I should also be kind to myself and remember that I did hit some good shots here as well. For example, that uh, chip that you just saw um, was a pretty decent chip uh, to try to fly past the hole. And then, speaking of being kind to myself, check out this putt, the putt of the day, perhaps. Luckily, it didn't have a lot of break left and right, and I was able to just kind of guide it down there. Ooh, save par. All right. Getting ready for a strong finish. Uh, handicap one, however. Hole 18. Well, handicap one on this particular nine, but, like, fear rating 16 for me. Why? Well, it's, it seemed pretty wide open. I mean, there's there's water on the left. Is there water on the left? Let's check, let's check it out. Yeah, there's water on the left. There's also like a, a pile of rocks that kind of reminded me of, um, there's like a rock pile in, um, behind there. I don't know if there still is. There used to be uh, a pile of rocks behind the center field wall at Angel Stadium in Anaheim, which is not too far from here. <laughs> so this pile of rocks kind of reminded me of that. It's just off the fairway to the left side. If you hit that, boy, that would be a disaster. It would kick the ball somewhere unknown. So that's there, and then to the left of that is water. But if you're going right, the safe side, I felt like I could just unleash, you know, a powerful drive if I could, because I had some space over there, uh, lots of safety options on the right side. So I did that. 
I might have almost uh, gone into the bunker because <laughs> I went even too far in that direction. Um, but here I am with some grass uh, under my ball. This one I blasted into the hillside. This is another low line drive three wood that, well, not ideal. I'm hitting three wood, by the way, for my second shot after a decent drive. So that underscores why this hole might be number one handicap, but not super scary because it's got space. Like, you know, it's not, um, the hazards aren't too close by. So hitting three wood off an uneven lie, eh, not ideal. Now I'm hitting nine iron for my third shot, a nine iron for birdie. So I'm kind of giving up on my, uh, my uh, goals for getting at least one birdie today. But this was a fantastic nine iron. I didn't know. It's another one where I was like hitting uphill. I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> but it turned out I hit it. There's like a hill in the middle of the screen and I hit it right into that hill and it just stopped. So now I've actually got a par putt that, well, can I make it? As you admire the scenery one last time here. I made the par. That's an exciting finish for me. Woohoo. Okay, so there's Bella Colina. Um, if you're watching this and you're thinking, hmm, should I get membership at Bella Colina? I'm not sure. I mean, the golf seems really fun and exciting and interesting and unique. Um, so that's all I'll say. If you're watching this and you're not a member and you um, uh, maybe you're not sure how you're ever going to get onto a private golf course like this that's so cool, well, keep the faith. There's some events out there you might be able to... to um, to access and uh, I hope you enjoy a little bit of access by way of YouTube uh, today and the psychology of golf. Uh, feel free to leave a comment or subscribe or reach out uh, for psychology tips and uh, I'll see you in the next one.